And there we go, everyone. We are back again for another fantastic conversation on Friday Night Counter at Second. This one is going to be one of those podcasts that we're releasing during the Christmas break and the New Year's break. So if you're listening to this on New Year's, Happy New Year. If you're listening to this after Christmas, I hope you've had a good time with your families, respectively. Um, this is going to be one of the best podcasts you'll be listening to over the Christmas period because we have got some special guests. We have got some firecracking topics to talk about today. Because if you clicked on this podcast, you already know that you're listening to the all-time European Championships draft. And you know our rules. You know how we do things. We're not playing things easy. We are going to struggle. There is going to be arguments, disagreements, violence on camera is all I'm going to say. And as you're hearing my voice as well, you know I don't sound like this normally unless I've gone to watch Man United win, which we have at the time of recording. So I'm all ears for it. I'm ready for it. Let me introduce our special guest panel. So um, starting from top to bottom, we're going from someone who's been on the podcast quite uh, frequently over the last three years or so which is great and now is back because he is the self-proclaimed draft king and I thought you know what let's up the ante for this one because if we, someone is a draft king or a draft champion and he's going to bring out the WWE belt there he is Danny Siggers Danny good to have you back on my friend hope you're all well and I hope you're enjoying um, your winter period how's everything going you okay yeah it's going well I mean after my last victory you did not um, win that last one. That Premier League one was nowhere near. You had an awful team. So I'm not looking people, forward to people you. Know, the people know. I don't need to question whether or not I, I thought I'm the champion or not. But You I'm rigged that one on today. social media. That's all I'm saying. You rigged it. I'm going to put the belt down for today and just focus on my fighting skills. Uh, I'm going to focus on my words of wisdom. Hope everyone's well is listening. Uh, happy New Year. Hope you had a good holiday season. And uh, yeah, looking forward to being on the podcast today, Hamza. Nicely done. I appreciate it. Good to have you on. Second of all, we are having someone who has been a great addition to drafts this season and puts a podcast this season, which has been great as well. Recently started up his own podcast and now is absolutely flying um, on social media and in the podcast game as well. So um, now it's time to introduce someone who I compared to Matthew McConaughey because they have the same first name. So it is all right, all right, all right that Matthew's back on the podcast. So Matthew from Back of the Nets, good to have you back, my friend. Hope you're all well and hope you're enjoying the draft challenge for this week. How are you feeling? I'm all good. I'm I'm feeling real good. I'm just wondering, do I get the belt from Danny when I win or? <laughs> There's no belt because you're not winning this one. I'm not <laughs> going to allow it. I'm out here because I've got a very special third guest as well. So we actually have the former Italian manager, Giovanni Trapattoni, aka Traps from, you'll see him on Manchester United social media channels everywhere. Very vocal on Saeed and never a foul and He's got his own amazing YouTube channel and Instagram page, which is killing it right now as well. So the first time I saw Traps was basically because he had his name as Trapatoni. So I thought, why does the former Italian manager follow me? And why has he got a picture of um, someone that doesn't look like Trapatoni? And I was, like, I, was, I was a bit dazed and confused. Again, Matthew McConaughey reference there. Traps, welcome to Friday Night Counter-Attack. I'm enjoying um, having your conversation today and I'm hoping you're going to enjoy the debut um, for yourself on Friday Night Counter Attack. Are you looking forward to your first draft with us and your first episode with us as well, Traps, this season? I am, yeah, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, this is not usually my usual thing. I feel like this is a task that's been settled for, set, set for me. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like I've got a good chance of winning today. You know what I mean? I put a bit of thought into it and yeah, I've got a few surprises in there. So we'll see what happens, man. But yeah, man, happy to be here, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to this one as well because we've got four very good football um, knowledgeable people as well, which is great. And as you've all seen from the title and from what I've recorded um, earlier as well, it's an all-time European Championship draft. So in December um, or end of November, I should say, we we're talking about the Euro 2024 draw um, for next summer, which is going to be in Germany. It's going to be a fantastic occasion. Our talks are potentially... Um, expanding it even further for more teams in the Euros in the future to come. Don't know how that's going to run out, but I thought, you know what, for, for the New Year's, for Christmas, for where we're doing, let's take a step back from talking about um, regular football, even if Man United are doing well at the time of recording, Arsenal are flying at the time of recording, and West Ham also doing very well in Europe and in the Premier League as well, respectively. So our, our teams are doing great, but I thought, you know what, let's have some fun, let's relax a bit. And like, like, like Trap said, Traps, your name is going to be a tongue twister for me, I swear, with this vo uh, broken voice today, I swear. Um, but like Traps said, um, let's have some fun and let's 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 put our minds to it because we would normally, the term I'd normally say was normally mm -hmm. cop out and we'd have a two-on-two -two for a draft. But it's an all-time European draft. Going to have four separate teams. We're going to have four different points of view. 
And as always, we do a limit of one player per country. And that one player per country limit is sticking. It is official. I was going to change at the last minute to two players per country. But you know what? I think we're good enough for this one. If we have to scurry away to Google just to search random Azerbaijani left backs from 1982, so be it. It's going to have to be the case. But um, how the how the game works for Traps, who hasn't done a draft with us and for Daniel hasn't been on this season, um, everyone gets to pick their wild card for their first choice pick for whatever on the pitch. And then we're going to move back from back to front, goalkeeper, back four. We're going to go for a 4-4-2, any variation. So it's going to be back four. Um, actually, no, you know what? To, to spice it up a bit, let me ask you guys. Would you prefer a 4-3-3 or a 4-4-2? If you're happy four, with 4-4-2. Four, 4-4-2. Four, 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 two. Four, two. That's two for 4-4-2. Four, four, well, mine's been, mine's been based around 4-4-2, four, four, so That's yeah. That's fine. That's fine. I've, I've rigged this game, so it's all good. I'm joking, I'm joking. 4-4-2 <laughs> four, 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 is perfectly fine for me as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's all good. Um, Matthew, happy with 4-4-2? Four, no, four, I'm all good with that. That's all cool. Good all good. That. So everyone knows why I choose 4-4-2, four, four, mostly because the fact that we get to talk about our favourite strikers and wingers a lot more than just like one striker and two wingers. So the end of the podcast is always the best part of the podcast when you get to gas up different strikers and obviously from different nations later on as well. So without further ado, everyone, let's begin our greatest European championships draft of all time. And we're going to start with a wild card. And as you know, I always have a fair order of going for things. So um, Trap, since you are our special guest today, you get to pick your first choice wild card. So for anywhere on your pitch in your four four two, um, the choice is yours, my friend. And remember, one country um, per player. So remember, when you pick, once you pick that player, that country is no longer in use. So think wisely. Um, I'm probably going to start off with midfield, and I'm going to say Clarence Seedorf. No, oh my days. Why is it people keep stealing Clarence Seydorf from me all the time? Max stole Clarence <laughs> Seydorf from me. This is happening way too frequently. It's like they know... Oh, I'm I mean, on my list. Me. It's all good. He's not on my list. I'm fine. He was my first choice centre midfield. <laughs> I, I feel I, like... Every, yeah. every time, yeah. every time someone him. picks a player, I feel like I'm just going to dodge a bullet because I feel like yeah. the list I've got... Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm fantastic with my list. I've got 11 countries, 11 players. I know exactly who I want as my wild card. So yeah, take Seydorf. Take him all you want. Days, man. Um, but yeah, Traps, talk to me about Tra- uh, Clarence Sadoff because <laughs> I've spoken glowingly about him. Matt's spoken glowingly about him. I'm bring, pretty sure everyone who follows Friday Night Counter Attack knows I'm a big fan of how Clarence Sadoff yeah. was head and shoulders above some of the greatest midfielders of all time and still never gets a look in, respectively. Yeah, yeah, I think Sadoff was one of the most underrated midfielders of his generation. He was one of the best of his generation. Um, I think he did he win how many? He won about four, I think it was four Champions Leagues, he won four Champions Leagues. Four different clubs as well, wasn't it? Or was it or was it three different clubs? It was Ajax, three, AC Milan, Real Madrid. Real Madrid. So it's two at AC Milan then. Yeah, two at AC Milan. Milan. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he, he never, he, he sort of never, um, he never, uh, wherever he went, he always showed his class. You know what I mean? He, he he never, he never sort of faded out. And obviously, when he got old, obviously, but um. There was another thing as well I saw about the um the international thing. I think he got to about I think got, didn't he get to about three, didn't he get to semi finals with like a few semi finals consecutively. Yeah, it's second day of competition as well. Late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, so he, he was a, a very solid underrated midfielder, and I feel like he's one of the one of the forgotten ones in terms of 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 of, of European football. So I went with Seydorf, Yeah. Forgotten in European football, but not forgotten on Friday Night Counter-Attack. Traps has brought him to the game and broken my heart straight away. Actually, you haven't broken my heart because I expected it because we've got top-level ballers. Matt knows what it's like and Danny knows what it's like when you see me upset and then you see me distraught. <laughs> so you will definitely see that later on as well, uh, which ain't great. Danny, fire away, my friend. First choice wild card for you. Where are we going? Uh, and are we going to Northern Ireland for this one, Danny? We will not be going to Northern Ireland. That's what a shame. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what everyone else's strategy is going to be, just in terms of who they pick. But then also, like, the positions as well, because, like, you know, the wild cards, you can choose whatever you want. I think I'm just going to have to get it over and done with and out of the way. I'm going to go... So do I go more defensive or do I go more attacking? That's the question. I I mean, you played as a goalkeeper once upon a time, my friend, so I'd I'd go defensive, personally. But I think this name helps it. And I'm going to go striker. I'm going to go Portugal's Cristiano Ronaldo. I expected this one. Like, straight for it. Straight as, as, for ev- it. as everyone knows, when, when we do a draft, I'm always last on the wild card because it's just been a gracious host. So I expected Ronaldo to be taken straight away. So I'm not upset about that. But I'm really surprised that 
Mr. Ronaldo has a lover in Danny Siggers because you've been yeah. nothing. You've you've never you've never said one good thing on this podcast about Ronaldo. So you're rather taking him away from the rest of us just for the sake of it. Or there's a real reason why you put Ronaldo in there. Can you tell us a bit more about how he won Euro 2016 and where you were watching that as well, Danny? Well, look, I was I was uh, I was away. I was in a different country in 2016 whilst he won that. But just like 2004, he's not going to be crying this time. Mm. Um, so the Portugal nation is not going to be crying. So I've gone with I've gone with Ronaldo. I think there were the other options I could have gone with, um, but I think they're still going to be available by the time the wild cards end. And because we're working from back to front, I'm sure. I might be able to get them. So I'm going to take him and I'm going to hope that he uh, he does the business for me. And it's a big name. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's the biggest name probably on this list. So yeah, that's what I'm going for. Matt was doing his Doctor Strange references there as well with his hands. So I'm expecting him to bring out a firecracker for his first choice wildcard. Let's hear it, Matthew. I'm going to go with Mr. Wayne Rooney. I'm going to go with Mr. Wayne Rooney. Yeah. I feel like you three had a group chat earlier and you're like, you know what? Let's break Hamza <laughs> slowly but surely. Sador, Ronaldo, Rooney. And Matt was on the last podcast when Rooney was taken away from me as a wild card straight away. Mm -hmm. So this is not it. This is not it for me. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Matt, talk to the audience about how great you, Wayne Rooney was in Euro 2004, especially. I know he scored in Euro, Euro 2012 and in Euro 2016, he was a midfielder under Roy Hodgson and Gary mm -hmm. Neville, which wasn't great <clears> in my opinion. But talk yeah. to us about how young Wayne Rooney burst onto the, burst onto the scene at Euro 2004. You know what? I think it was mad for everyone. I think for me, I just remember, I remember that uh, Euros because they had that weird silver ball. Um, I, love that that. Little, I love that. I love that. The black lines and, and that game against Portugal, I just remember watching me thinking, oh my God, I don't remember the last time I saw a player like that. Mm. He wasn't just doing a job up top. He was tracking back, putting in tackles and his aggression kind of rubbed off on the rest of the team. And you could see when that injury happened, it was like, yeah, like it was just one of them ones where everyone kind of looked a bit, you know, despairingly. But Listen, the guy was phenomenal. The fact he was a United player, it was kind of difficult to support him. But listen, for England, an absolutely phenomenal man. Yeah, it's true. Taps, anything to... Um, not taps, traps. See, the tongue twist is happening again. <laughs> traps, you're trapping me with my with my linguistics, <laughs> isn't it? I'm not liking it, my friend. Anything to add on Wayne Rooney and his impact for England as opposed to his impact for Manchester United being the record goal scorer until Harry Kane overtook him recently? I think... Is he not still... He's still above uh, uh, Harry Kane in... in um. In in goals uh, in the uh, in 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 the actual tournaments, I think I think he's got about. Is he not on six or something? Is it six? It's like for the Euros, it's like six for Rooney and like five for Kane. But that's it. Like yeah, yeah. Difference. I think. I mean, obviously, Rooney's been retired for quite some time now, and obviously, mm. for him to still be st still be in and amongst it just shows you how good he really was. Yeah. Um. Interestingly enough, he's not. He's not on my. He's not on my list because I've been. I've won strategic here, so he's Ooh. not. <laughs> he's not on mine. So, um, but yeah, Rooney was amazing. It's phenomenal. Sixteen years of age, goals against Arsenal, unforgettable game, unforgettable goals. Always had had literally everything in his locker: headers, free kicks, volleys, dribble, aggression, passion. He, and he was great for his country. Fifty. Think, how many goals did he get? Fifty three or something? Fifty two? Yeah, fifty three. I think, which is crazy. Yeah. So. I mean, it's just a shame we couldn't bring it. We couldn't bring it home, but nevertheless, Rooney was an outstanding player for his whole career. Nah, that's all good. Everyone who's listening, make sure you are commenting on the video that you're watching now. And if you're listening on Spotify and Apple Music, be sure to um, make it your own. Make your own draft as well. It's not easy doing it by yourself, so you have to make it with other people as well, which is great. So. We've had Clarence Seydorf, we've had Wayne Rooney, and we've had Cristiano Ronaldo. So um, it is what it is, but I'm going to have to go in a different route entirely for this one. By the way, everyone, after the podcast, make sure you text me these so I can get these edited, which is good fun indeed. Um, to, to pull it out of the bag, Zinedine Zidane has to be in there for me. I've got to use my French pick really early for this one. Danny's shaking his head. I don't know if he's going to say it stinks or it's not the right one, or he had him on his list to play with Ronaldo. Not sure not, about not this the one. French player on my list. Not the French player on my list. Let's put it I know way. there's a French player in all three of yours list who you want out at number nine. <laughs> so I was like, I could go for him, but there's a much greater Frenchman that I need in my team. And if I need someone of GOAT status and one of the greatest midfielders we've ever seen in our lives is Zinedine Zidane. And the fact that he was catastrophic at the Euro 2000s was incredible to see what he really did as well. I mean, he was someone where he looks six foot one, six foot two, and he's balletic on the ball. He was someone who could like play 
with like 10 pieces of wood around him, like Sir Alex Ferguson said, and still be one of the best players as well. Winning against Portugal, I think, in the Euro 2000 semi-finals, I believe correctly. And then golden goal, obviously, David Trezeguet um, in the final against Italy as well. But Zidane is one of the most influential footballers we've ever seen in our lifetime. Amazing coach as well. I've spoken glowingly enough about him as well, respectfully. But Zinedine Zidane had to be the wild card because a few of them were taken from me straight away, which weren't great. And you know me, I'm always going attacking. I'm not really thinking strategic strategically like I should be doing, but it is what it is. Zinedine Zidane. Trap talks to me about Zidane and how, if you agree or disagree with him being one of the most influential midfielders of all time. Definitely. I mean, his career, both on and off the pitch, is outstanding. Do you know what I mean? So, obviously, the headbutt, that even that was outstanding to be fair. Do you know what I mean? He he was a brilliant midfielder, clever on clever on and off the ball. Um, and obviously, yeah, definitely one of the most influential. I mean, if not probably, I would say arguably he probably well, he is definitely if he's not the best, he's definitely top three, I'd mm. think. Nah, I mean he didn't well. it didn't score as didn't it wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't a great goal scorer, he didn't score like loads and loads and loads of goals, but when he did score and how he played in every game, it was just a, be- a joy to watch. So, I mean, it was, yeah. I mean, and again, like you said, off the pitch, uh, uh, free, uh, back to, well, free, free Pete on uh, Champions Leagues and and a couple of leagues. And people, I mean, people did actually doubt him as well because they was like, oh, he had the best team and then he came back and won the league again. So... If it was so easy, why hasn't Pep done it three in a row in the Champions League? So Yeah, yeah. I mean... Zinedine, Zinedine Zidane again. Obviously, people will never, people are never going to respect. Uh, well, people do respect it, but people are always going to question it until he goes somewhere else and does something, replicate some kind of success somewhere else. But for me, I feel like he's done enough. So Zidane, yeah, great. He's a great pick. Great choice. Nicely done. And um, yeah, before we move on to our goalkeepers, Matthew, talk to me about how in that game against England in Euro two thousand four, the one where when you burst onto the scene, Zidane in the last minute scored a free kick. He threw up on the penalty spot and then he scored a last minute penalty against David James to then win the game for France because we were dominating all game long. And um, do you remember that? Because that's one of my fondest memories of the Euros, especially Zidane doing that against England. And he was dominated in midfield by, yeah, he was dominated in midfield by Gerard for a good number of parts in the game, which is odd to say out loud, but it did happen in that game. What's your thoughts on that, Matthew? Matt, you're on mute. You're too so kind. That's what I'm going to say that it just wasn't one of the best games. Um, mm. But then, literally, the way you just finished off, and that's a sign of a quality player. You know, they can have them type of games, but just at the end of the game, you're like, oh, this guy was at the top. But he was just phenomenal. And I just remember the kit, the little Adidas Predators. Listen, like Trap said, the guy, if he's not the best, he's literally top three. I think because of Ronaldo and Messi, we don't really put Zidane in, you know, them, them leagues. But for me, he's probably my number one. I would mm. say. And Danny, as you're a football coach as well, if you see a midfielder wearing number five, do you allow it or not allow it? Because I was wearing number five today when I was coaching. I was like, I need to be ZZ5. I need to be up there. Would you allow it or not allow it? Nah, a five is definitely a centre half. The only exception I think for numbers is I always, as being a being a West Ham fan, I always think a number six is, a, is also a centre half because of Bobby Moore. He's no longer a, a DM. But look, wear what you want, man. As long as you play that position, then you can go and do exactly what you want to do. And that's what Zidane does. You know what I mean? He, he could be wearing the number 42 on his back. He, he could be wearing anything and he would still be able to, to shine. So let him do what he wants in that position. Number 39, in it trap, Scott McTominay. Zidane McTominay needs to be done. <laughs> yeah, Mc, McDan, yeah? McDan. <laughs> Zidane McDan is crazy. All right, goalkeepers again. We're always going in different orders. So Danny, start us off being a former goalkeeper and a, a really good goalkeeper coach, has to say. I should say, where are you going for your first choice goalkeeper and why? So this is what floors me with this draft time because I don't know the order. So I'm always on my toes regarding like, am I going to get first Okay, choice? so the order is goalkeeper, right back, centre back, left back, yeah, right no, midfielder, centre mid, left like, mid, and then two strikers. Oh, that's, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. Even I don't know where we're going. <laughs> It's a randomizer app that I'm using as well. Four options, and I'm like, well, I could go with this guy. I'm using a randomizer app at this point, so it's all good. I thought I was going to be going fourth, but look, I'll go first. I'll clear the floor. Look, one nation per country. Um, Cheers, lads. Uh, Peter Schmeichel, Denmark. Oh my god! (laughs) Matt's in flames. Matt was on smoke for this one as well. I I was so ready. Oh, I know. I mean, I had him as my number one because it's like, look, it's a good nation. 
Um, so they won the Euro. So again, no one could be talking smack about it. But mm-hmm. then I also had like a fourth point, fourth choice pick as well, uh, which I was more than happy to choose. So yeah, I'll take Peter Schmeichel, um, a goalkeeper of that presence, leading his team to a 92 <laughs> victory um, as the underdogs. Look, I'll take it. Excellent choice. Excellent choice there as well. Um, yeah, traps goalkeeper for you. Where are you going with this one? Well, oh I've, please, I've, Matt says. Matt says. Oh please, he knows where he's going with this one. I've got three. Yeah, I've got three. But obviously, one's just been taken. But I'm just thinking. Do we do? A, I'm t- I'm t- it's a toss up between these two here right now. Mm. And I'm go thinking. Trap. Go the second one. Yeah. No, I'm not going to go the second one. You know, I'm going to go the first. One. I'm going to go Casillas. That's Matt's Ooh. childhood hero. I'm loving this game. I'm gonna go. That is more it. broken that's... than I am so far. Oh, right, I'm loving cool. this. And that, this and, that, and that was my second choice. Yeah, that was All my right. second choice. Michael yeah. was my choice for tactical reasons. But look, no, sorry, Casillas was my first choice. Then I moved into second, and then yeah, obviously he first got taken. So it was meant to be, innit? it? It was meant to be. Casillas was meant to be. Casillas, obviously, look, uh, Spain dominated for a long time. I think it was like 2008, 2008. 10 and, and uh, there's a World Cup in there 12 or one of them one, yeah uh, 2008 anyways. Euros 2010 World Cup 2012 Euros yeah and I mean he was he was a mainstay there and obviously he was brilliant for them made some made some great saves and like again club he he, he, he was he was um how many Champions Leagues did he win he won a few didn't he mm. Mm. Was it, is it, yeah he won a few Champions Leagues as well three, so I, mean, I think that's, Three yeah, three. I think yeah, I think it was three. I think um yeah. So Casillas is a <laughs> Casillas is a is a is a brilliant goalkeeper. He he was at the helm, and his longevity as well. His longevity was was mm. was was outstanding as well. People 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 don't really rate that. People forget about that. How long he was actually at the helm for Real Madrid and whatnot, and such a young age and whatever. So yeah, I mean Casillas is one of the best again, easily top ten goalkeepers all time, I'd think. And yeah, that was that's my pick. Great segment there. Great segment there as well. I love that trap. So especially seeing Matthew being hurt so early in the draft. It's good. Um, my turn for goalkeeper, and I'm going to do it. Do it. Do you want me to do it? I, I don't know if I'm don't know if I'm gonna break Matthew by choosing this player, but I know Dude, he's I thinking. I promise you, if you hurt me with this one, I'm coming on smoke for everybody. I'm telling you, please so, do it. Up. So back in the Euro 2004, there was a little known football team called the Czech Republic. And they had some really good oh. players in that side as well. <laughs> Milan Barros, Jan Koller, Pavel Nedved, Ballon d'Or win in 2003. But their goalkeeper was a young player from Slavia Prague called Petr Cech, who then moved to Chelsea and became one of the greatest goalkeepers we've ever seen and was probably one of their best ever players uh, from the Czech Republic. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure Matthew would have gone for someone like Jens Lehmann or something, but I think Petr Cech was a better shout. Matthew, who are you going to go for, by the way, for your number three? Well, let me just say, yeah, them three are what on my top five list. The one no that way. hurt me, the, the one that hurt me the most is Danny's one because I was banking on that because that just got that nation out of the way. But you know what? I'm gonna go ham with this one. I'm gonna go my goalkeeper, Manuel Neuer. Oh, but then you take your German pick out. That's I've got to just your... do it. I've we've got all got it. we've all got elite goalkeepers, so we're I'm all going with it. it. You know what? I think with Neuer, we all seen. I think like. You know, nowadays we've got these goalkeepers that they've got to be good with their feet and all of this and that. With Neuer, he was the first, I think along with Victor Valdez at the time, where they'll just rush out the box and it just looks very composed on the ball. Um, he shot Fabian Bartes him. did it first. What? what? <laughs> just, um, Bar- unbelievable. Bartes was a Bartes was a poto type man. He wasn't. He was, <laughs> yeah. he was, he was, he was half full, cooked. He was, half he was cooked. in the. He was in the full sample that one. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable shot stopper. And you know where, where he won me over? Do you remember the Lampard one when he acted like it didn't go over the line? He just literally... He just threw it halfway <laughs> across the pitch. Just threw it halfway. Crazy. But yeah, Manuel Neuer, great goalkeeper for me. And he had a record in that tournament. I think he went, it was that like 560 minutes without conceding as well. I don't think mm. he conceded up until the quarterfinals. So yeah, he's going to be my goalkeeper. Listen, we've all got superstar keepers. Let's go for it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And Matthew, take us away with your first choice right back. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna go for kind of it's a weirdish one. This one, um, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Hamza, it's always <laughs> not again, man. Not again. Learn your, your learn your footballers' names, man. It's not no, Asperly this Quetta guy. Something. He's a Croat. He's a Ooh. Croat. Uh, da- is it Dario Sonar? Uh, Dario Serna. Serna. I love the guy. Nice you know choice. what? Every tournament that come up, you know, Croatia. Okay, name me a tournament Serna played at. Oh, 
Ooh. You don't know ball. You don't know ball challenge. Do you know football? Which uh, which tournament did he play at? You're saying every tournament. Which tournament? Name me one. Uh, do you know what? Now I'm starting to think, was it a World <laughs> Cup? <laughs> no, but wait. He definitely played in the Euros. But which one? That's what I'm asking. Oh, wait. I'm going to have a hazard, I guess. I'm going to say 2000 and... Oh, you're getting me on camera as well. Five seconds or you forfeit this, this, this one. And do you know what? I'm going to go 2008. That's an eight, really? Two thousand six, sorry. Two thousand six. That was I'm a World Cup. Punish him. Oh, what is it? Gun, kill me. Ah, he played in two thousand eight. You're good. Yes, come you're on. good. You're good. Come on. For those beware, beware of the traps. Beware of life. the traps because they're traps set up by everyone. So by, beware of this one because I was I was thinking Matt <laughs> yeah, was just doing I, a copy think, and paste from Wikipedia. I think I've got one coming. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Fire away, my friend. First choice right back traps. Where are you going? Do you know what I'm gonna go? I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say right because obviously I'm gonna go right back and I'm gonna say Gary Neville. That's your England choice. Yeah. No way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no That's one wants choice. to be a Gary Neville. No <laughs> one wants to be a Gary Neville. But back I in mean, 1996, he was he was the right back for England in the semi What you have to remember is Euro '96 was the first tournament I ever seen as a kid. It was the first tournament I saw as a kid. I remember the day like it was yesterday. National Anthem, Gary Neville, Curtains. Yeah, it's all going off, yeah? Anyways, that tournament there, I thought Gary Neville... That was the first glimpse I had of Gary Neville. Obviously, wasn't really a United... Well, I was a United fan, but I wasn't, like, an average United fan like this. I wasn't really into it. Like, obviously, I knew a couple of the players. I was learning. I was learning. I was quite young. Gary Neville for me in that tournament was one of the best players, one of the better players. And yeah, I mean, people could argue and say, I mean, I know, I know there's a, there's 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 argument to say there's better right backs nowadays and whatnot, but realistically, I feel like Gary Neville was very, very, very disrespected. Like he, he's a very decorated right back. And he, he still is getting he, disrespected because he's yeah, in the and, media. Yeah, and he's and obviously I feel like people, because he's now gone to gone from gone into the management that didn't work well and now he's gone to the punditry. I feel like people actually forget how good he actually was. Mm. Especially with with, with it, it, it definitely it wasn't the fastest, but definitely could he definitely could cross the ball. He was he, he was similar to the modern day right back if you if 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 you actually look at his attributes. So I think yeah I'm that's my England pick and that's again that's strategic but I'm not gonna lie to you Gary Neville for me first few glimpses of Gary Neville when I was growing up he, he was a great, he was a good player, man. Nah, it's good to hear that. Danny, first choice right back. Where are you going with this one? Oh, uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, obviously, Neuer was chosen by someone, so that took away their German pick. I'm going to Germany for my right back, and I'm going to go for Mr. Philipp Lahm. Nicely done. Really like that one. Definitely didn't have that one in, in my list as well. So that definitely wasn't my I choice. Did. I did. That was my second choice. That was my first choice. I'm not even going to lie. That was my first choice. But... Could have put him anywhere. Could have put him in centre mid. Could have put him at right back. But for me, <laughs> at right back is where he was uh, able to shine. You know, a bit bit of a... Uh, I don't want to say olden day because he's not olden day. But a bit before his time of an inverted fullback. You know, mm. pushing inside, creating an overload. Allowing the back three of Germany... Um, where he stepped in to just stay compact and tight and him to help out that midfield of Schweinsteiger and the rest of the crew, Kadira, whoever it might be. So, yeah, I like I like him as a, as a right-back pick and it makes my team strong. You know, you've got Schmeichel, Lahm and Ronaldo at the moment. I'm looking down at everyone, so. <laughs> That's just on height as well. Ronaldo looking down to Philip Lahm, which is crazy. Um, right back for me. Um, where are we going with this one? Don't show off your your belt. You know, you know, you're you're not going to win this one, Danny. It's not happening today. Uh, first choice right back for me. I'm going to go for one of the countries to get out the way straight away. Um, right back. I'm going to go for Poland's Lukas Piszczek. I'm go for him at right back, and I'm going to look to risk it all on the later, um, bigger nations. I should say later on down the line, but also. Counts out Robert Lewandowski, but he's been awful at the Euro, so I'm quite happy with that, um, respectively. Mm. First choice centre back, um, it's actually me, which is great. Mm. So first choice centre back for me, if I'm going for anywhere in Europe for the best choice of centre back, um, Matthew knows what's coming. All right, all right, all right. We are going to Italy, the home of defending. But who do I choose for my Italian pick? And that's why I didn't pick Buffon for this one so far as well. Hamza, um, don't do it. Don't do it, Hamza. I'm not going for the play that you think. I'm going for a play that I just want because it's going to look better on paper because then I'll win on 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 the polls, which is great. 
Mr. Paolo Maldini is going to send to back for me. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, cool. Take him. Take That's him. fine. He was, he was on my list. <laughs> <laughs> I love this reverse psychology that you guys are doing. <laughs> he, right now. he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't. I'm not going to lie to you. He wasn't. Nah, it's good. I'm happy with I'm happy with Pijek for some reason. I'm not happy with him at all. I just wanted to get rid of that Polish uh, pick as well. And right and centre back is Paolo Maldini. So trap take it away. First choice centre back. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go to Italy. I'm gonna follow you to Italy. And Ooh. I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick Cannavaro. Oof. Danny, it. first choice centre back. I'm gonna pick uh, Cannavaro, I'm, yeah. I'm going to Spain and I'm going Carlos Puyol. Oh, I like that one. I like this one as well. Right, Matthew, take it away. Are you off to Scotland for this one? Yeah, mate. No, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> hell no. You didn't even. Stephen yeah. Hendry is coming out of nowhere. Yeah. Nah, do you know what? For me, it's got to be my guy, Alessandro Nesta. Good man. man. The man you compared me to last week. So I'm, I'm quite happy and thrilled <laughs> for that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> which is very good without even seeing me play. I mean, <laughs> I appreciate it, Matthew. Nicely done. <laughs> Leicester. And mm-hmm. second choice centre back, we are going for Matthew first. So, bye again. Second choice centre back. For this one, it was a bit tricky because I kind of want to say, I want to save in this nation. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to do it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, yeah. do, it. It, do it. Do it. <laughs> Daddy, You're a big man, you'll do it. Exactly. And you know what? No, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm going to go. So, Nesta, who would be good with him? I, I like a left footed guy. I'm going to go for. No, 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 no. Don't do this to me. I'm going to go do for it. De Boer. Oh, okay. Your, your, ne- your Netherlands pick is De Boer. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm, my rest of my team is very strong. That's okay. It's not bad at all. I'm, I'm going to go De Boer. For me, I like, you know, I know people that don't mind centre backs being both right footed. I've got this thing. I love a left footed centre back. Mm. And I think the ball when he was playing for Netherlands was quite listen, the whole team was littered with quality. But it's why, it's why you love Lisandro Martinez so much as well, and uh yeah. <laughs> Aguard as well from West Ham United, which is crazy. So yeah, I like, no, but, yeah. <laughs> I like the pick. Nicely done, Matthew. Um yeah, traps it's you. No, 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 actually it's me, then it's you because you, then yeah. you got two. Yeah, so it's me. Second choice centre back for me. I'm gonna risk it all because I want it to look cool. Ooh. And Portugal is taken. So I'm going to go for Pepe as my second choice centre back. So Pepe and Maldini, you got the, the the beauty and the damned, I would say, basically with Pepe. And Pepe, remember winning the, the Euros, being emphatic at the European Championships in 2016 with an aging Ricardo Carvalho as well, respect, uh, respectfully as well, which is great. Pepe Maldini is looking quite nice for me. So I'm quite enjoying this one as well. Traps, you then get first your, your second choice centre back and then you get first choice left back, my friend. Whoa. Fire away. Well, <laughs> that's what that's well, what that's what the app says. So, if I uh, I've not got my second centre back, but I'll. Uh, oh I'll no, you haven't, have you? So then it's traps, then it's Danny, then it's traps again. So by all means, so yeah. traps first for centre back, then Danny centre back. Well, again, tactical reasons. Um, they're not this, tactical. They're not tactical. This, no, Come listen, on. No, this this guy here, um, obviously his nation isn't a big nation, but he's a very big defender, and Ooh. I'm going to go with Nemanja Vidic. Did he play at the yeah. Euros though? Yeah, he did. Which he one? Did, I checked I check this out, right? Let's he, um, see it. He, oh, let, me, let me get this straight now. I think it was, what Euros was it? You don't know. Was, it, 2000, was it 2004? <laughs> was it 2004? Oh, was it 2004 yeah. qualifications or did you just Google that, Traps? No, because basically, <laughs> what, I, from, what, from what I understood is they, they qualified. He was in the defence that qualified. Um, they qualified with squ- conceding one goal. Um, he got injured. No, he got no, he got a red card and he was suspended for the first game, but he played in the second game of, mm. of, of the of the tournament. So, right. so traps just to interrupt you there. Nemanja Vidic never played at the European Championships at all. Ah! He played in the World so, Cup in 2006, but he never oh, played in the Euros at all. Oh. Um I got really love, um, you should get Harry Maguire as, <laughs> as a forfeit. As a forfeit, get Christensen or someone like that. Johnny Evans. What what? I mean, so what would I mean? Well, yeah, all right, whatever. I don't know. Now, what's now what's you, the forfeit? There's no forfeit. <laughs> no, no, we'll let, let him land. Let him land. Yeah, no, let him land. land. It's We're your first right. time, so we'll let you land with this one. Let's go for it. So pick another centre back traps. But you've been right. warned. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. I'm not going to mess myself up here because I got my se- <laughs> I got a second choice here. Uh, no, I've seen now. Uh, yeah, I've done myself in here, man. I'm not going to lie, I've done myself in here. Um, played yourself. 
Um. Yeah, no, I've done myself in here, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because if I if I say one you're... thing, if I say one thing, it just ruins everything else. You know what I mean? If I just throw someone in there, it's gonna ruin. So it's gonna ruin everything else. You got a ten second countdown, or you're getting Andreas Christensen from Denmark. Ten, um, nine, eight, seven. I'll six. take Christensen. I'll have to take him. I'll have to take him. <laughs> Andreas Christensen, nicely done. Scored a banger at the Euros in 2020 and got to the semi-finals for Denmark in the last Euros yeah. as well. So not not an awful pick. Not an awful pick. That traps nicely done. Danny, second choice centre back. Where are we going with this? That was not an awful pick where you are so tactically in depth of knowledge of the footballing game that you can pick a second choice centre back without any hassle. Um, my Italy pick is going to be Giorgio Chiellini. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Puyo and Chiellini. No I'm liking that one. Getting, no I'm one is getting that. past that too. Nicely done. Get long okay. tucked inside. Oh. I asked Matt. I smell a start bench, um, start bench cell challenge coming up soon, sooner rather than later. So we're gonna have to oh, see what happens with this one. Um, but yeah, traps first choice left back position. Back to you, my friend. Where are you going with this one? And now this one, yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I just this one. I done a bit of research on. Um, Did they play but, at the Euros, by the way? Did they play at the Euros? Uh, I'm, oh, I don't know. If doubt, now you got me doubting it. Did they, did they, we <laughs> you said you found the research. Now. I hope you're not looking. Okay, at was it? Was it was it a U was it was it a, was it a Euros or a World Cup now? Um, I think it might have been a was it a Euros? I'm just gonna go for it. No, I don't know. Go on, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. It. Do you know what? I'm just gonna say. I'm don't. just gonna say. Paul, I'm gonna say Paul Breitner. Paul Breitner. Who did he play for? West Germany. West Germany. Boy. Have you picked a German player? No. Right. Yeah. Paul Breitner, German football player. It was in the all-time World Cup edition. It's 72 years old. Jeez, you're going back far. I know you're not that old, Traps. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, but right. obviously, when I was thinking about all-time greats and that, and I just I just, I just, just started having to read through, and I thought, whose story is the best? And it's obviously, <laughs> they, and his story is the best, you know what I mean? Because apparently, well, at that time, when uh, it was sort of like the Dutch was running things with the whole Johan Cruyff total, uh, football. total football stuff, and they went to the semis and West Germany absolutely dominated them. And he was part oh. of it with him, Beckenbauer. And uh he played two games in the Euros. You're, you're lucky with that on traps. Nicely done. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That's, that's my that's my left back, man. Yeah. Nicely done. I can't wait to watch highlights of Paul Brightner later on today. <laughs> this will be good fun indeed. That pick, that pick stinks. It's crazy. <laughs> <Christensen>. <laughs> right. So uh second traps are a nightmare traps. Traps, come on. First choice left back for me. Um, I'm gonna have to go for one of these sacrificed countries. Um, so I'm going to. Oh no, no, I shouldn't because my backline will fall otherwise. Oh, difficult. Okay, I'm gonna go for David Alaba, left back, Austria. Matt is turning his head because he was that was his first choice as well. Oh, the crowd goes home, and the crowd goes home. <laughs> yeah. Alaba, one of the best left backs of all time, in my opinion. He's now playing as a centre back. He's played at the centre of defence and midfield, and left back and left mid. He's played everywhere for Austria, so I'm quite happy with that one, respectively, um, which is really good. Danny, first choice left back. Where are you going with this one? I'm going. I'm going France, and I'm going to go to Ram. Turan never played left back. You don't know ball. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. When? when? That's a At... lie. He he was a premature. Is always right back or centre back. He's never played left back. No, nah, Turan was a right back. Fourth you don't know in. ball. <laughs> now nah, you get a warning as well. Don't mind it. Oh, in ten nah. seconds for your next one. You're not playing Turan left back. He's a perfect right back. Turan, look. If you look on transfer you... market, yeah. <laughs> did he nice. play left back at the Euros? Is what I'm asking. You oh, know, it's the Euros. You can probably say that about a load of players. That they play their positions at certain things, but transfer Ooh. market would suggest otherwise. He may have played there, but I don't think he played there for France at the Euros. Yeah, but he may have played there. Come on, Renato, Renato transfer market. You're a Sorry. liar. You're a liar. That's transfer market right now. Right, <laughs> centre back, centre back. <laughs> don't try it with me. <laughs> this does not work, right, Danny. Right, you know right. better than that. Come on now. Ten seconds, or you're getting all right, um, all right, okay, you're getting okay, Ryan Bertrand okay. from England. No, no, no I'll, I'll take an England pick. I'll, I'll go Ashley Cole. I'll go Ashley Cole. Nicely done. Good shout. Trying it with me. Nothing gets past me. That's that's a lie. Lots of things get past me, but not today. Not today at all. Uh, Matthew, first choice left back, and then you've got your 
first choice of your midfielder. So we'll get into the midfielders in a bit. But first choice left back, where are we going with this one? Well, again, someone took my pick. You took Alaba. Oh, I'm going to go really? for a smaller nation. Mm. Uh, this guy was great for his Italian club team. Um, I know he played left back at times, but yeah, sentiment. Anyway, Christian Kivu. Romania? Okay, you oh. don't know, Ball. When did Kivu play at the Euros? I think he did. I think he did two. I think you think or you know. I think it was two thousand, and he did two thousand eight. And two thousand eight, he did very well, and he, he was getting plaudits. And I think he was nearly in that team of the year. I think it's two thousand. Mm, let's double check. Let's double check. Oh. You mean? Oh, you should be knowing this. Are you just picking <laughs> out players from the top of your head? And I just love you. <laughs> he had a great free kick on him as well. To be yeah. fair, Christian and also Kivu. he scored a chip against England. If you look, remember. In the Euros as well, and I think Martin was in goal. I think someone was. In that goal. was Euro two thousand. Yeah, and yeah, you've just confirmed that as well. You've not lied with me. He was at Euro two thousand eight, respectively. He was one of the key players, and I think he was a captain in a few games as well. So there we go. I like Come that. Pick. On. I like that Come pick on. as well. Right, traps and Danny. As you know, we've been doing a four four two formation for everyone. So this is where you get to do any variation of four four two. It can be four four two with two holding midfielders, with wingers, a diamond. However you want to do it, by all means, the choice is yours. Um, so I think me and Daniel, no, me traps. Danny, are you playing Ronaldo as a winger or a striker? Just so we can, uh, he's a striker, he's a, he's a he's a he's a nine, yeah, definitely up top. That's fine. So it's going to be Matthew, Danny, and traps. And I've picked, picked a first choice center mid, so then we're going to go, um, after you guys as well. So, Matthew, starting from right to left, who is your first choice right midfielder? Oh, this one, I'm gonna, I've got to do him, I'm gonna go with. Luis Figo. Nice. Great shot. Luis Figo. Yeah. Nearly took his country all the way to Euro 2000 and Euro 2004 when they lost in the final against mm -hmm. Greece, which was crazy because it looked like one of the most awful sides I've ever seen. And it's <laughs> yeah. all from a corner. Andreas Karasteas, who I asked for a podcast for on LinkedIn, and he said, mm -hmm. I don't understand English while writing back in English. <laughs> so thanks for that, Euro 2004 win winner, Andreas Karasteas. <laughs> nice of you to say that for me as well, uh, which is great. Danny, first choice right midfielder. Where are you going with this one? Uh, it's a bit of a weird nation for me, but still, I'm sure uh, Matt will appreciate this. I'm going to go Freddy Lundberg of Sweden. Nice. Like Representing. That. That's what I've got on today. <laughs> I'm enjoying this one, which is good, uh, which is all okay. Traps, don't break my heart. Please don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. Where are you going as your first choice right midfielder? So, just just, just to clarify, yeah. yeah. You see this, see, see this Ronaldo situation? Mm. Is it like, is he gone? <laughs> is he not? He's gone. He's gone. He it's you a draft. Play. He's taken. He's taken right. from the shelf. Yeah. You can't pick him out. You can't. Right. You can't. Cool. Well, I'm, him. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Bail. Uh, right midfield. Yeah. Yeah. Hamza. You took Hamza's. Is it? Go yeah. Because I think. Wait. Yeah. Because you know the, the one against uh, England. I'm sure he played right mid. They he, they played in a three five two, but he played predominantly as a as a right forward. So obviously, yeah. I'm gonna give that. It's perfectly yeah. fine. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, left midfield. Oh, okay, right, okay. okay. Nah, he, 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 I'm happy with Gareth Bell as a right midfielder as well. Um, honestly, that was my pick. Not gonna lie to you. Not gonna beat around the bush. That was definitely mine. Um, really, real, realistically speaking, though, I've still got a few strong nations in, so I might have to risk it with a with a player of mine going forward. So, if I'm going for a right midfielder, I'm gonna go for a player who, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go for him because it's played right midfield here previously. David Beckham. Going to go for David Beckham at right midfield. Fun choice. Favourite choice. Zidane Beckham midfield. I'm enjoying it, which is quite nice as well. Um, so, yeah. I wanted to change it last minute, but I was like, if I change it, it wouldn't be who I want it to be because um, I'm saving this nation, hopefully, for later on, which will be good. Uh, but, yeah. Right. First choice midfielder. We've done centre midfielder. So Traps and I have done centre midfielders, which is fine. So um, Danny, take away first choice midfielder. Centre mid. Centre mid, yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, so obviously I was hoping I'd be able to go to Ram, um, to Ram left back. And then I was going to use an English player here. Mm. That's probably going to be taken uh, in the next couple of stages. But we'll see. Um, I can use my my France pick now. I'm going to go Petit as a, a holding midfield player. I like that. That's a nice shot. Emmanuel Petit, World Cup winner, Euro 2000s winner as well. Incredible midfielder he was. Bringing through young Patrick Vieira and Claude Makaleli 
in that side. Incredible player, incredible defensive midfielder. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, first choice centre midfielder. I'm gonna go <clears throat> with a, I'm gonna go with a French one. I've already picked France, so it doesn't bother me. It might bother Traps though. Traps, have you picked some French player yet? Oh, but I've got two midfield. It depends how I want to play. So I've got Figo. Who goes well with him? All right, you know what? Do you know what's yes. mad as well? Yeah, I haven't even picked a French player because the French player that I picked is already gone. And if I actually thought about it, yeah, I could have had a I could have had a decent set. But this is what I'm trying to say. I, I wasn't prepared. I this, wasn't prepared. This is this. how the draft goes. You have to be tactical about it. You may have to sacrifice. Yeah, but if I, I, if I yeah, but if I thought about it, I wouldn't have flipping Christensen as a centre back. Would I? <laughs> you would have had Vidic who never played at the Euros as well. Oh, this is crazy. And it also means there may not be a French attacker in this one, which is insane. Ooh. Go ahead, Matthew. Where are we going with this one? You know what? <clears throat> this one I'm gonna go Patrick Vieira. Nice. Like that one yeah. as well. Just ha- have to be just a boss in general. You all, I ain't got to speak on it. You all know yeah. that, Vieira. You know what? I was so close to picking v- Vieira, but <laughs> I know Petit raised him. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, liking that one, which is good. Traps, we're back in the game now with our midfielders. You've obviously picked Clarence Sadov for one sense midfielder. Um, and I've got Zinedine Zidane as well, another midfielder, which is great to see as well. Go mm. ahead, Traps. First choice, oh, second choice centre midfielder for you. Where are we going? Well, I'm going to have to go Modric, man. No, why are people... <laughs> I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to go Modric, mate. I'm Modric sorry. and Zidane would have been perfect. But now you've got Seydolf and Zidane. No, Seydolf and Modric, which is just as good. Just as good. Oh, this is crazy. There's, there are no friends in this draft. There are no friends at all. Listen, I've got to make it up. From Look what happened to the centre. <laughs> like, I've got to make this up, mate. Christensen is not, is not looking good right now, which ain't great at all. Nah, that's a good one from you as well. Right, centre midfielder to partner Zinedine Zidane. I'm going to have to go for... Oh, this is the this is one on the flip side for me. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for Germany because I've not picked a German player yet. I'm gonna go for Tony Cruz in my midfield. So Cruz and Zidane got to hold it down for me um, as well, respectively. So don't mind it at all. Don't mind it at all. Second choice centre mid, Danny. Then Matthew. Then Matthew you got your first choice left midfielder as well. So Danny, second choice centre mid. Who have you got in midfield partnering Emmanuel Petit and why? Uh, this is where it gets a little bit weird. Um, I want to be able to use a better nation elsewhere, but I've used a Scott lot Scott McTominay's the... available, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I want to be able to use... Um... It's his birthday today as well. Happy birthday, Scott McTominay. 27 years old. Just come to West Ham. We'll do a better <laughs> job than you. Um, I want to be able to use better nations elsewhere. Ooh. And I'm hoping, I'm banking on this one guy being available when I get back to striker. So I'm going to go with Marek Hamšík mm. in in centre mid. But did he play at the Euros? He would have done. Yeah, I think he played against England. You he would have done, or he did. He would have played. I think Slovenia played England in the in the. You know Slovakian, right? Slovakia, sorry. Slovenia. Slovakia played England in the in the group stage. Ooh. But did I think which, I remember this? I think I remember which this. Euro, which Euros though? Which Euros was it? 2012. No. 2016? 16. Yeah. 16. 2016. Yeah. Nice I'm thinking the 20, 2014 World Cup. Was he in the World Cup of 2014 or no? Or he qualified? He must have He's in the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. It's an amazing chip against Italy. 16 euros. Marek Hamšík. A good player. Petit can sit whilst Hamšík roams. Uh, you know, you've got Lundberg running up and down, helping out. And then Lahm will tuck in and help Petit. So... I've got a good little stit, uh, good little tactic going on here, and I know that my left midfielder and my striker are going to be my saving grace. I'm liking so, this. Fingers crossed. Fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Nah, great midfield, everyone. We're doing very well with this one, and Petit's going to hold it down for you um, as well, respectively. All right, then, Matthew. This is where you break my heart again and again and again because you've got your second choice centre midfielder, and then you've got your first choice left midfielder, which is I think I know who you're picking for your left mid, and I'm going to write it down. Separately, so I'm going to guess it for this one. But yeah, fire away. First choice, or second choice centre midfielder for you. So I'm thinking my team's quite balanced. I've got Figo, got Vieira. Now I want someone in midfield that can just pass the ball neatly. Just... You're going to Wales for this one, yeah? Joe Allen. <laughs> uh, listen, you say you say Wales, but there's kind of a link with this one because they they call this guy the Welsh after this person. Ooh. Um, I'm going to go with Xavi. Why is he called the Welsh? No, no, uh, Joe Allen, isn't it? The oh, Warriors, Joe Allen. Yeah. 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 The Doy, I should have got that I'm, I'm going to go with Xavi. I think, you know, with him, he's not. he wasn't the quickest, but 
I, I don't think I ever saw him really lose the ball. He was mm. just absolutely phenomenal in centre midfield and passing, always find a player. And I just feel that like Figo mm. Vieira Chavi just feels good. And with my left winger, there's no better midfield. My midfield's winning. Nicely up. done. Fire away with your first choice left midfielder. Go on, Hamza, you tell him who it is because you know. Go on. Tell okay. Him. My th- my my thought for you with the player that you wanted because I've taken him and you've picked him before. I think mm. you're going to go for Pavel Nedved. 100%. Yes. Sounds like oh. 100%. The guy, yeah. listen. The guy that stole Thierry Henry's Ballon d'Or, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> We've all heard it before. Well, not even just that, but he burst onto the scene, the Euro 96. That was mm-hmm. his, like, the rise of him. And then I think, I can't remember what Euros it was. I know you're going to say you don't know ball, but there was the one where him and Barosh 2004. helped against, yeah, against Netherlands to mm-hmm. um, help the comeback. So, yeah, listen, Nedved, that midfield, can't beat it. It's too good. Nah, that's great. I'm liking that one as well. It's looking very nice as well. Traps, first choice left midfielder. Where are you going with this one? I'm going to Eden Hazard. Oh my! Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't pick him. That's fine. Stop I don't it. Him. <laughs> there is some Hazard. ballers in this team now. Traps is coming back, firing with Eden Hazard in this team. Oof. Tato in midfield as well. This is crazy looking as well. It's insane. Oh my days. This ain't great at all. Um, Go I'm ahead. Happy with that midfield, man. It's a, it's a really good midfield. I'm liking that one as well. Danny, let's let's see if you're going to break my heart one more time. Where are you going as a left midfielder? Well, this, this is this is third choice of <laughs> Strange Nation United. Um, <laughs> Should I be had, the name of the podcast, I think. Strange I Nation had United. Nedved as number one. And then I had Hazard as like, a, oh, if I don't get Nedved, then I'll take, ha- I'll take Hazard. Mm. Um, I'm going to go Andre Arshavin. Euro 2008 that was sort of the Freaks first will never Euro forget that I watched so I like that and yeah I'll take it not the, not the one I'll take I mean if I don't get this striker now it sort of all goes to plot I'm not um, going to lie Danny needed that one though because he, he's, he's looking quite strong he needed that one man he needed yeah. to humble it especially with Ronaldo up front as well. he's, he's, had a, he's, had a, he's had a good clean run He's, he's happy with it, which is good fun as my, well. But... My back four is holding me down at the moment. My midfield of, yeah, Strange Nation United is is not doing me much. Slovakia, Sweden, Russia and France. <laughs> I'm liking uh, this, which is nice. No one no one mentioned... Uh, can I do an honourable mention? Not yet. For, not, not yet for midfielders. I'll do mine, then we'll do honourable mentions, okay. which will be sure, good fun sure. as well. Because we don't want to spoil it for strikers as well. Um, but yeah, to make up my midfield, what David Beckham, Zinedine Zidane, Tony Cruz... <laughs> And on the left wing, I'm going to Spain because I'm right now in pain because I'm going to have to go for one of the greatest midfielders of all time who dominated and was the key figure, in my opinion, for um, Spain's dominance between Euro 2008, 2010 and 2012. And he played in three different positions in three different tournaments and he was still the match winner in the 2010 World Cup final. And the player of the tournament in Euro 2012, Andres Iniesta. Thank you very much. What a baller. I needed him in my team. It's going to be a slower midfield than I'm expected to play, but we're going to be controlling and dictating from the midfield as well, which is great. Right, and Traps, because Wayne Rooney and um, Cristiano Ronaldo are picked already, you and I get first choice on strikers because then we get to like, basically level the playing field. So Rooney's it, done. What Danny, do you mean, that's, how, that, that's Danny, how we did it for midfield. That's what Danny did. That's how I feel. <laughs> I was no, wow. no, no, no. That's that's what happened with midfield. I played the game fair because we, that's how we do on this on this game, which is very good. So, um, traps fly away. First choice striker and why? Le- lean back a second. Oh, I knew that's what I was gonna say. Oh, he knows oh, what he's fine. doing. Lean back all you want. Lean back all you want, Hamza. Yeah, pick it, pick it, pick it. Is, is going for Will Grigg. I know it. Will Grigg is on fire. Traps did exactly what I was nah, going to say. <laughs> I'm going to take Ibrahimovic. Yeah. Yeah, Fine. because, I mean, I'm looking at it now. I think in, in the Euros, is he not Is he not the second second top, most goals, most second got top goal scorer to, um, to Ronaldo? Is he not? No, just in qualifications. Qualifications. Yeah, well, so, so, well something, something along them lines. But Ibrahimovic, great player. The arrogance of that man is phenomenal. He believes, listen, he believes in his source more than anyone else I've ever seen on this planet, even <laughs> at 40 years of age, he, st- he, he still believed he was the one and he took no shit for his whole career. And you have to respect him, man, because in the, the day he stuck to his guns and he's had a good career. could have been better if he had succumbed to certain pressures and done certain things. But nevertheless, he he, he, he made he made good choices. And yeah, I think Ibrahimovic is a great choice. 
Nah, very good choice. I really enjoyed that as well, respectively. One of the best players we've ever seen in Europe, especially from what you consider a smaller nation as well. But annoyingly for Zlatan Ibrahimovic, his greatest moment or one of his most famous moments in a Sweden shirt was in a friendly against England. It's when that incredible overhead kick against yeah. an empty net with Joe Hart and Stephen Cooker in the back, Tom Huddleston in the team. One of his best moments in, in the Euros was in Euro 2004 when he was coming up as a strike partnership with Henrik Larsson, which was incredible as well. And I know you're expecting me to pick Henrik Larsson, but I might do later on for my for my second choice player, which is going to be good fun indeed. Right then, there is a big country that I've not picked. Well, there's a few big countries I've not picked from yet um, as well, which is great fun. So if I'm going to one of my favourite countries, mostly for food and for travelling as well, respectively, I'm off to... I'm, I'm not going to go for them. I'm not going to go for him. I can't go for him. Nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it somewhat safe with this one um, to build up for this one. Pick Spain or pick Germany, or pick France, pick England, Austria picked, Portugal picked, um, Italy picked as well. So, Netherlands, going to go don't for it. it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Please, <laughs> please, please, Hamza, 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 Hamza. Let's talk, let's talk, Hamza, let's talk. Let's talk. If, if, if you, you, you know my bank balance details, you know if you want to send over um, a favourable wage, I wouldn't mind just leaving this player out, but I'm not sure you picked the same striker as me, but I'm going to pick him because I love the guy. And there's a combination with David Beckham in his team where I think he would work very, very well um, with as well, so... Introducing Rude Van Nistelrooy to the draft, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy that I've got him as well. I know Danny wanted another striker in there, respectively, but I'm always, I'm always going to go with my heart over my gut as well, respectively. Rude Van Nistelrooy is in the team for me as well. And Rude Van Nistelrooy was a very prolific goal scorer for both the Netherlands and for Manchester United. And as a lot of people say when I make these drafts, I'm very much millennial with my choices as well. So I'm quite happy that Rude Van Nistelrooy is in the team, mostly because Clarence Adolf was taken from me immediately. Um, which ain't great at all. all. Right then, Matthew, second choice striker to partner Wayne Rooney. Where are you going with this one? <clears throat> I kind of killed myself with the striker I wanted because I took the country already. But mm. I just feel this combination up top guarantees me goals. Mm. And his nickname has the word goal in it. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. His country, his, uh, I'm going to go for, and again, it's a smaller nation, but He's their most clinical striker, one of the best in Europe, feared ones. I'm going to go for Mr. Robert Lewandowski. How many goals has he scored at the Euros, Matthew? You don't know, ball. Oh, no. Um, I'm... Has he scored at the Euros? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he has scored at Euros, but I'm in Which one? Nation. Oh, oh my God. I I'm not going to lie, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know how many goals. But I know he scored about 19. That's including Nations as well. That's mm. about 18, 19 goals, I think. Not bad, not bad. I'll, gi I'll give you that as a guess. I don't mind it at all, uh, which weren't bad at all. Uh, nicely done. All right, then, Traps, finish off your team. You've got Zlatan Ibrahimovic up front. Where are we going for your second choice striker? It's a partner, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Um, I was going to go Lewandowski, to be fair. <laughs> I didn't really need to. Didn't really need to, but obviously, well, I did because I did. I kind of wanted to throw a little spanner in the works, but I'm trying to think now. You look, oh, I'm trying to think. What have you lot? Where have you lot gone? What? Where can? I, where can I throw a spanner in the works here? Where, where can, can you I... go? Is the question. You got to figure <laughs> no out spanners, what countries you've got. No left. spanners available. No spanners mm. available. There's no spanners really available, is there? I mean, I've got France available still. I've got France still, have I? Yeah, I've got France. I've got France available. Did you pick? I've France? got. Yeah. No, I haven't picked anything, any, any, anyone from. That's what I'm trying to say. That I could have went centre back, mm. the French centre back. That would have been good. That would have been. But yeah, but I didn't go. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go on read. Why not? Let's go on read. Let's do it. Great comeback. I'm loving that one. Let's, Let's go, go on read. Nicely done. Nicely done. Danny, go ahead. Second choice centre, uh, centre forward. Break my heart with this one. I think I know who you're gonna pick. Um, this one as well to partner, um, Cristiano Ronaldo up front. This would be the best combination of a strike partnership. If I can get Lundberg and Arshavin supplying, Hamsik slipping in, one on their left foot, one on their right foot, um, then we're, we're absolutely game. I'm going to go with Marco Van Basten. Great pick. Really enjoying that one as well. We're actually going for the all-time topic now as opposed to just, yeah, for the yeah. sake of would have um, been, would recency have been 
best player of all time, in my opinion, if throughout the injuries, what he showed during that time period looked unstoppable. Um, and I think a lot of players will, will agree with that. Um, and, and it was a shame that he's been injured. But look, all these things come to an end. All the greatest players get uh, have to retire for injury. You know, Van Basten, Dean Ashton, you know, all of these players in, in world football need to retire for injury. So. Van Basten and Dean Ashton in the same sentence. It happens, man. It happens. Person. The same player. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nah, Van Basten fair. reincarnated right there was, was Dean Ashton. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days, this is crazy. And what's also crazy is my final pick because, um, yeah, I'm going to go for someone who I think, I don't know what countries I've got left actually, to be fair. I've got England, France, Spain, Germany, Italy, Netherlands. Portugal I've used, Austria I've used, Poland I've used. Oh, could I actually go for Will Grigg? I can't go for Will Grigg. Don't, don't be silly. Netherlands can't go. Um, there's probably a few that I could pick, but I won't just because I'm going to go for all. I mean, yeah, let's go for it, man. I'm going to go for Nah, this is painful. This is so painful. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have to rely on it for the sake of variety. Um Go for Henrik Larson for this one. I'm enjoying this one. There was Henrik... there were better options available from other countries. There was Romelu Lukaku <laughs> from Belgium. There was Madzukic from um, Croatia. There's a few other old players, but again, as you know, I don't really like doing drafts when I haven't really seen the player. So it kind of gets what I talk about as well. But um, who else did I miss out on? What other countries did I miss out on? I had Cause... I had Milan Baros down. Not better than Henrik Larson. Come on now, Henrik Larson was world class. Nah, bar for bar, he goes. He goes. No, bar for bar, goes. one played for Liverpool, one played for Barcelona. I'm not having that. I'm not having that at all. No, Larson's uh, Larson's streets ahead of fucking Barros, man. Barros had a little run with Liverpool, man. I had um, what's his name, uh, Davo Suke. Yeah, that's what I was going for. I had Suke yeah, and Madzukic yeah, for yeah. Croatia, but I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to try and chat about a player I've never seen before. That's just not mm. me. So, uh, which is really good as well. In hindsight, I probably should have gone for. Actually, no, not in hindsight at all. I'm sticking with Zidane because I could have gone for Henri as a striker, but um, that's how I like it to go for as well. So before we read out all of our teams respectively, which will be good, um, on any, any honourable mentions from any players or any teams that we've missed out on as well, respectively. And then we've got a start bench sell challenge at the end of the podcast as well, which is great. I've got so, one. I've got one. I don't mind shooting. Um, I had Paul Gascoigne in ooh, there before. That's before a good I shout. Um, just off the goal alone, do you know what I mean? And and, and, mm. and the celebration, what it meant for for European football culture. Um, Phil if Foden dyed his hair like that as well. And yeah, if I could have had Saram at left back, I had uh, I had Gascoigne and Petit as my two midfielders. So that would have been uh, you. I'm going to sit here. You go and run right, Paul. So uh, we'll gather. Go and run right. So that was one of my honourable mentions. Ah, it's good to hear that. I'd Robert Van Persie down as well. Um, didn't really do well at European tournaments. I remember mm. the Euro 2012. He was weren't great. He scored a goal and then I think everyone was like, all Arsenal fans were hating him at the time because he was on his way out to Juventus but he ended up going to Manchester United respectively, uh, which was really good. A few from me, um, Christian Eriksson, I'd go for him. Obviously what happened with him at the Euros, he was better than further down the line. Jadan Shakiri for Switzerland, he would have been a good pick if you needed a Swiss pick on the wings. Um, I'm going to say Will Grigg, obviously, because Will Grigg is what I was teasing the guys of earlier today. If you needed a Northern Irish pick, Will Grigg's on fire. For the culture in 2016, Granite Xhaka, Frankie de Jong, I would have gone for for the Euro 2000s. Federico Chiesa, Joachim Mailer for Denmark as well. Um, we've got all the best players, but in terms of players, if you needed like a secondary player from a smaller country, respectively, Romelu Lukaku as well. If you want to go for Lukaku, but he was pretty good at the Euro 2020. But I'm like, nah, Henrik Larsson had a class about him, he had the elegance about him, so happy for it. And obviously, right, my Sweden kit, uh, which is all good. Traps, any honorable mentions from your side? I mean, I had Gerard Piquet on here. Mm. Um, who else did I have on here that we, that we missed out on? Uh, Raul was Raul was there as well. Bass player, unreal. Um, who else was there? Yeah, that's pretty Villa. much it. David Villa. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's. I mean, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, all the other names have probably been mentioned. To be fair, but yeah, I'd put it. Raul, great striker. Um, set the levels. And obviously, when the Ronaldo's and the and the uh, and the Messi's came along, they um they uh broke the barrier even further. So um yeah, I mean yeah. Nah, it's good to hear. 
Uh, Matthew, any honourable mentions from your side? You know, I had so I had the two rounds. I was going to put Busquets in, uh, Ooh, Philip, nice. Cook, Philip Cuckoo, uh, Deco, Pogba when I was prime. And I had one weird strike. I don't know if any of you guys will remember this guy, but I just remember when I was young, I used to try and copy him. There was a guy <laughs> that used to play for Slovenia, and his name was uh, something Zahavic, I think his name was. And he used to have a headband, his left footed guy. And I think he was like, I don't know why I just remember him, but he was quite good along with. Um, there's a Spanish one, Alfonso, that used to wear white boots back then. Yeah, so I just remember two left foot strikers from back then. So those are the two I remember. Nicely done. I'm enjoying that. All right, let's all read out our teams and then we've got a final challenge to start bench cells. So uh, back to front traps. Let's hear your team for the all-time European Championships draft on player per nation. Let's hear it, my friend. So it goes uh, Casillas. Nice. Neville. Cannavaro. Christensen by default. <laughs> yeah. Brightner. I'm <laughs> Brightner, yeah. Let, let, just, I just want people to know about Brightner, yeah. Brightner is the old is in he's the he's he's a he's a left back, right? In a fight in, in a um World Cup final, he only him, Pele, and someone else have scored two goals. Just remember that. Yeah. So we've gone Paul Brightner. Midfield did Messi, gone, did Messi scored two goals as well. Um, I'm not too sure, but I mean, there's only, I mean, I'm not too sure, but I think there's Or do you mean else. at the time when that happened, basically? No, I, I think, yeah, I'm not too sure, but I think Messi, Messi might be added to it now, but at that time, yeah, I, I think it was only him and Pele. Yeah, yeah, I think it was him, 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 him and Pele at the time. So, yeah. Nice. Um, Bale, midfield. Uh, yep. Bale, Seydorf, Modric, and Hazard. That's crazy. That is man. a that is a devastated midfield, you know. I'm I'm very proud of that one. I'm not gonna lie, I'm proud of that midfield. That's a match winning midfield. That's all I'm telling you, man. That's crazy. And yeah, who's I mean, up front for you. Up front is Ibrahimovic and Henri. <sighs> you might have won. I think oh, I won. I think I won. You might won. you might have won. You might have won. Even with Christensen at the back, you might have won. We should have given him like, first. I, that I feel back. like with all of them picks, all of them picks, it sacrifices Christensen. I think Christensen can be allowed. He could be a passenger in this. Yeah, nah, I don't mind it at all. It's pretty Remember, good. Let's let's make him the captain to to kind of boost his boost his uh <laughs> his profile a bit. We'll make him the captain. <laughs> what would name the team name? Christensen's FC, which will be fun. Yeah, as well. so so we've got him, we've got him there for the for the for the dressing room, the leadership skills, whatever. Just flag it a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm loving that. Nah, that's a great pick. Make sure you text that to me later on as well. Danny, what's your team looking like? Because you had the best player, in my opinion, um, in attack as well. So let's hear your team back to front. Just quickly, traps Christensen signs for Man United tomorrow. Are you happy? <laughs> and this was a moment in time, yes. Hundred percent. But why Christensen at the back? I'm loving it. Uh right, my team. Uh, I've got Peter Schmeichel in goal, cool. uh, back four of Philip Lahm, Carlos Puyo, Giorgio Chiellini, and Ashley Cole. Nice. Uh, midfield four, Freddie Lundberg, Emmanuel Petit, Marek Hamšík, and Andre Shavin. And then my front two of CR7 and Marco Van Basten. Ridiculous front two. That attack is insane. Oh my days! I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm just trying to picture the transition of you know, like it's from back to front. That's gonna be. Oh, that, if, that, if you strong ball, it'd be long ball. <laughs> that's gonna be long ball. That's gonna be crazy. That chance is gonna be crazy. Andy yeah. Carroll, Van Basten turning into Andy Carroll. That'd be crazy. It'd be, it'd be Lundberg. It'd be like someone whip a ball down the line into Lundberg. Crosses, crosses from Lam. Crosses from Ashley Cole. Crosses from Arshavin, and then Petit on the edge of the box, just clean up crew, slide yeah. someone in. Liking that one. I'm liking that one. Matthew, I saw your heartbreak a few times today. Let's hear your final 11. I think I survived in the end. Um, Neuer in goal. Uh, Kivu left back. De Boer centre back with Nesta. Dario Serna right back. My midfield. Figo, Vieira, Xavi, Nedved. Ooh, and Rooney, Levin- <laughs> Rooney Lewandowski up top. I, I think like the, for me, the balance is just the balance. Perfect. Uh, your back four stinks. Your back. Four stinks. Uh, I, 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 I. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I, I'm looking. I'm looking at this this right side now with Hazard, Henri, and Modric there. I, I I don't I don't think I don't think any of you look any of you lot's back lines can sustain that kind of pressure, man. I'm not gonna lie. That's that's, that's thing, big pressure. The thing is, you wouldn't even get to my back line because my midfield would have that ball. You're done. My midfield just. I don't think your midfield midfield can hold the ball as well as my midfield. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> And to segue into this, this is my team. Uh, so in goal, I'm going for Petr Cech, back four of Lucas Pijek, Pepe, Paolo Maldini, and David Alaba. 
Midfield four, flat four as well. David Beckham, Zinedine Zidane, Tony Cruz, Andres Iniesta, the two-time European Championship winner. Up front with Henrik Larsson and Ruud van Nistelrooy. Um, bit of a... your, team, your team should be called No DM. Just vibes. Yeah. <laughs> they just DMs are blocked in this one as well. I don't mind it at all. Just crossing into the box for two diving head and strikers as well, which is great. And it le- that leads us into our final segue as well, because I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a start bench sell, and it's going to be a start bench sell for attacking midfielders. By the way, I should have put, I was, I was actually going to put uh, Musa Dembele into this into this team, but I couldn't leave out Tony Cruz for a striker. Uh, but yeah, start bench sell. We're going to go for attacking midfielders edition. We're going to go for, uh, actually, we can do it. Yeah, we definitely can do it. So we're going to go for prime. Francesco Totti going to go for Thomas Muller. I should have not attacking midfielders. Let's do it. Let's do it as withdrawn forwards. I'm liking this one. So yeah, Francesco Totti, Thomas Muller, and Dennis Burkamp. Let's hear it. Start bench Oof. cell. Dennis Burkamp, Francesco Totti, Thomas Muller. Let's see who knows ball. Traps, you're up first, my friend. Oh, why first? I didn't even <laughs> think about this. Everyone does, so, but you're up first. Um, I'm, I'm afraid. So Muller, Muller. Who is it? Muller. Muller, Burkamp, and Totti. Burkamp, Totti. And Totti. Three amazing mm-hmm. attacking midfielders, Trek Batista's second strikers, whatever you want to call them. I don't think they've won the Euros, though, as well, between the three of them. So I think that's best of the rest, I would say, that also weren't picked. So where are we going with this one? This is crazy, this one, man. <laughs> um, I'm going to... Oh, do I start Totti? Um... Yeah, I'll start Totty. Mm. I'm gonna bench. I'm gonna bench thingy. I'm gonna bench uh, uh, Muller, and I'm gonna sell Burkamp. Oh, Matthew, you're yeah. gonna have that. Do you know why I'm gonna sell Burkamp? Let's hear it. Because the, the reason why I'm gonna sell Burkamp, this is the main reason why I'm gonna sell Burkamp. He's a great player, but I am not in the business of booking. R- travel on the on, on, on the ground because this guy can't fly to wherever I want him to play at. So he has to go. That's the only reason why. He's not taking a bus. It's crazy. Danny, start bench cell, Francesco Totti, Dennis Burkham, and Thomas Muller. Look, I'm just gonna echo what Traps has said. I had the exact same thing written down. I've got Totti starting. Um I think he can give me 60, 65, 70 minutes worth of just like pure lethal getting the ball, trying to smack it into a top corner. Mm. I think Muller. Has to come off the bench for me. I think he's a little bit more tenacious. He can he can come on. He can give me that little bit of legs. Um, and then for me, Burkamp, I think he's always. I can't. I don't want to say it too much, but I think he's never been that main striker wherever Ooh. he's gone. So I want to say that he's always had to have someone being his supporting artist. Um, so if I'm looking to play one up top on his own, and you know have wings coming down it then I'm going to have to go Totty start then Muller off off the bench no nah, nice done. I don't mind that at all and Matthew start bench sell Burkamp Muller Totty where are we going to this one Burkamp start done of That's course it. of we'll course stop. and you know what I just think I know what everyone's saying but uh, someone try and find me a better goal uh, than Bur- any of Burkamp's goals from any of the other not finding one um, Francesco Totti watched no. some of his goals as well that chip for Roma is incredible <laughs> I don't know if the chip's better than the bring it down Argentina game finish. I'm just saying. Anyway, that's my guy, Dennis Burkamp. Great touch, though. Great touch. Great touch. Um, now, this one's tough. I rate Totti very highly. I just think Muller doesn't get enough credit. Like, mm. he's phenomenal. Um, I'm only just, I'll probably bench Totti. Only just. Because I think Muller's, you know, he's, Muller's just good at everything. <laughs> he just, he's not. Okay, some people might call him world class. He's not the best at um, something, but yeah, he's all right. But I think yeah, Totti just above, like you said, the chip. And Totti was Roma's guy. You know what I mean? The main Donny, one club man. Like, I love loyal, loyal, yeah. top yes. winner as well, two thousand six. You, you know what I mean? And you don't mm-hmm. get many of them type of players now. Innit? And I don't. I think he got a role after within the club. So yeah, he, he, he's he's a don. But yeah, I would say uh, Burkamp start, Totti bench, and Muller sell. Nicely done. Um, yeah, I'd go for starting Francesco Totti, uh, benching Dennis Burkamp and selling Thomas Muller. 
Tom Smith's a fantastic player, though. I don't get the hate or the lack of appreciation he gets in the game because there are quite a lot of times when you're watching Thomas Miller play and you're like, how is this guy still a footballer at the mm-hmm. top level? But the fact that he does it year in, year out, and he consistently delivers uh, for Germany and he was part of that team when they won the World Cup in 2014, uh, respectively, uh, which is not bad at all. But yeah, that's a great start bench sell. Um, Dan, yeah, I bet you have another start bench sell if you've got one, European edition. If you have one, let me know. Or if yeah. anyone has one, let me know. Does anyone have one? If they have one, I've got another one before we wrap up. Uh, Euro's edition for me is quite... Yeah, I've got one. I've got one. I've got Go one. For it. So, goalkeepers. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I'm going to go... Greece's Nico Popolidis Popper, Popper, or Popolidis. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna surprised go. you didn't pick him to be fair. He Amazing. was on my list. He was on Amazing my list. In the Euros, though. Uh, I'm gonna go Poland's Fabianski. Oh, from Arsenal keeper, West Ham keeper now. And I'll go. Who's got another like? Ah, who's the Hungarian goalkeeper that used to wear trousers? Karali. Karali. <laughs> there we go. Those are my three: Karali, Nico Popolidis, and Fabianski. Start being sell. I'm selling Kirali because how are you playing for Crystal Palace in jogging bottoms? That is not happening <laughs> at all. Get off the pitch. Play with like everyone else is playing. It's crazy. It's not even religious reasons. Revolutionary. It's, re- it's, it's, it's ahead of its time. Edward Davids wore like glasses to protect his eyes. And this guy's wearing jogging bottoms like he's just come out of Sports Direct. Leave it out. Thank you very much. You're off. You're out of here. You've been sold. Um, I'm going to... The goalkeeper for Greece, though, he's really good in the Euros, though. Um, I'm still going to sell him because Lucas Fabianski, I think, is an underappreciated goalkeeper, um, in my opinion. But yeah, that's my start bench. So you know, the thing is with Corali, yeah, is he could have worn any color jogging bottoms, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, like the the Lonsdale grey. Yeah. Thirty <laughs> percent off. Sports Direct. Funny though. <laughs> yeah. It was that like what that UFC brand or like what, what's the brand called? It's like it's not UFC. It's like Everlast. That's the one. He probably, to be fair, he probably got sponsored by some jogging bottoms or something. So it's like, he said, you got to wear these jogging bottoms, mate. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's fair. That's, that's like, like, I respect it. He's got to get his bag. Do you know what I mean? He's got, he's yeah, got I mean, that's probably what it is. Crystal but Palace was great at the time as well, which was Hamza, That's someone you need to get on the podcast. And it's just the first question you need to ask him is just, why would you wear jogging bottoms? bottoms? In the championship as well. It made it so much worse. Nah, I don't mind it at all. Don't mind it. Um, what's everyone else saying? Start bench so. Matthew, where are you going with this one? Do you know what? I had one. I'm going to go. Meza Ozil. Kevin De Bruyne. Ooh. And this is all in their peak. Kevin mm. De Bruyne. Ooh, do I go Cesc Fabregas or Marco Royce? I'm going to go... Go Fabregas. Let's do... Yeah, let's do Cesc. Let's do Cesc. This is Say a hard again. one. Start Cesc bench, Fabregas. sell. Meza Ozil. Kevin De Bruyne, Cesc Fabregas, all in their prime. That is a tough one if I've ever seen one. Ooh. I don't even want to start that one. <laughs> Someone else I mean, go, you've, 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 you've done that. So I'm, I think we're all going to participate in this one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll go first. Go on, go on, Traps. Go for it, man. Ooh. Why did I say that? Why did I even say that? <laughs> I'll leave you to it. You, you take the heat off me. It's all, it's all good. Um, right. So we've got Kevin De Bruyne, Cesc Fabregas. Oh, my God. God. I'll go. I'll take the heat off you. Go on, then, mate. That, that ready. <laughs> uh, you've got to start Meza Ozil, in my opinion. Mm, I was thinking that. We were all thinking prime, that. In his what prime and his accolades as well, what he's done internationally. Um, got to start him. Controversial. I'm going to bench Cesc Fabregas. Ooh. Ooh, I, I don't think, and I've said this for the longest period of time, that KDB is at the star-studded level that he should be at in his career right now. How old is he? Anyone fact check? 32. 32. 32. 32. Yeah. For me, KDB at 32, yes, you know, very well respected within Premier League football, but only within a Man City side, which sort of was made around scoring goals. And if, you know, if you're producing, like at the moment, James Ward-Prowse, he's getting a lot of praise because he's been able to find that one thing which West Ham have been missing, which is putting the ball on someone's head. James yeah, Madison for Spurs as well earlier this season as well. Park. Yeah, exactly. Same, same with mm-hmm. Madison for Spurs. How many Just... Premier Leagues has he got though? Has he got six? Or five? He's on five right now. Five, I think. Yeah. yeah. Five. Because he came yeah. in after Pellegrini. Well, he came in during Pellegrini and then Pep came in the season afterwards. 
Yeah, well, Pelle, you have to remember, did Pellegrini won it, was the last person to win it, wasn't he? Yeah, Pellegrini won it the, the first f- season, but the second season when Leicester won the league, he, he left in that season. Yeah, but they've, I, I, I mean, they've got seven Premier Leagues in there. Uh, is it seven or eight now? Let me let me check. Hold on. Let's have a look. But yeah, I know he came in. I, I know he was at Wolfsburg that season because that's when Pep saw him in the Bundesliga because Pep was managing mm. Bayern Munich and he's Kevin got, dropped a, a ten out of ten against him. He's got five Premier Leagues, Champions mm. League, five League Cups, and two yeah. FA Cups. Mm. Damn. <laughs> I mean that's hard to ignore, man. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but but if we're talking if we're talking international as well, then... he's not done it for Belgium at all. Yeah, exactly. no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. Kevin De Bruyne for me, I feel like Kevin De Bruyne is one of the most overrated midfielders. He's the most glorified midfielder. But at the same time, that doesn't because even though I'm saying this, people people this is a problem with people. People think that when I'm saying this, they automatically think I think he's not good. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying at the end of the day, the praise that he gets for what you're seeing isn't. Doesn't match, doesn't match up because I mean, he, even there's been times where he's won PFA Player of the Year, mm. and I, I think even he was shocked at it. To be honest, he, he must have thought, "Well, how did I manage this?" But I mean, yeah. I, do you know what I'm selling him as well? To be honest, nice. I'd start. Look at this way, I'd start. Mesut Ozil, Ozil, just, quick, just quick, just quick. Yeah. Look at this way. The look, like Özil World Cup, Spanish League, four FA Cups, German League Cup winner. Mm. Like he's he's done it all. Do you know what I mean? And like, he was critical in that 7-1 victory against Brazil as well. Mm. Cold play, like lethal. Mm. Brazil were crying for the rest of the week <laughs> what happened with that. Mesut Ozil was the catalyst of it, uh, which was great. Fabregas Matthew, where are you going with this one? Fabregas World Cup? Or... Yeah, Fabregas World Cup 2010, yeah. yeah. For me, um, again, you've got to go Mesut. Uh, headband Mesut with Cristiano Ronaldo was a madness. Like, he, And Ronaldo even said it. Ronaldo was like, you don't even look for the pass, you just run and the balls have come in front of you. So Mesut was the guy. And again, I'm like Danny. I feel like De Bruyne, yes, yeah, one of them ones. They do kind of overhype it a bit, but Sesk in his prime was just like phenomenal. Like he just wasn't Mesut level. So yeah, and I love I love both Arsenal legends, let me just say. <clears throat> just saying. Um mm. so yeah, definitely Mesut first. And yeah, De Bruyne will go, yeah. So I'll start Mesut, bench Sesk, and uh sell De Bruyne gladly. Nicely done. Uh, I'd start Mesut Ozil. I think he had more impact on football culture as well compared to um, Kevin De Bruyne. That little bounce pass he had, the goal against Luda Goretz was just a thing of beauty, respectively. Kevin De Bruyne, I would bench. I would bench Kevin De Bruyne. He's not done it internationally, but you can't ignore what he did at Wolfsburg, respectively, when he got kicked out of Chelsea for not being great. He has done it in a smaller side, respectively, so he he has brought the numbers up there as well. He hasn't done it. Wolfsburg was quite good, to be fair, at that time. They were good because of him, because they won the league five years earlier. And then Kevin De Bruyne was a signing where they just needed someone in the midfield. And he's playing as a right midfielder at the time. And then he converted over time into a centre attacking midfielder. Um, but mm. he just he just never did it for Belgium. At the World Cup, he was shocking. He was awful at the World Cup. And at the Euros, you expect more from him. And people say, oh, it's Lukaku, Lukaku, Lukaku. Look at Kevin De Bruyne. This... Lukaku was injured until the third game. Uh, really annoying from Kevin De Bruyne. And I'm going to sell Sass Fabregas mostly because he threw a pizza at Sykes Ferguson in the 2004 match at Old Trafford when we beat uh, Arsenal's unbeaten record. And I think, beat, you know. I think with with with, with Sass Fabregas, you can't ignore that. I'm sure he was he was kicking ball from such a young age in the Arsenal team. 15, 16, he was, he was, was it 15, 16? 16 so Champions I, I, League. Yeah. I, don't think, I, don't, I don't. I don't think you could ignore them kind of things. I mean, because mm. that was the that that if you're if the, obviously people say if you're if you're if you're good enough you're old enough, but to mm. be to be good enough at 15, 16, that says, says a lot, man. So I, I think you'd have to. I, I would have to keep him, and I'd I'd I'd, I'd, I'd um I'd, I'd start um Ozil as well because Ozil was. Can I, can I just say yeah. something in regards to what Traps was saying? Spot on with the Champions like Champions League. Like we remember Danny like when he played Juventus, and that was a time when Juventus had that Vieira Turam team, and mm. Sesc went in and just bossed it. Absolutely bossed it at age. So you mean the yeah, season where they got fixed for match fixing and they got relegated that season? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's crazy. Imagine they played in the Champions League the year after when they were in Serie B. That would have been incredible. Yeah, no. Um, no, one last start bench, um, start bench job before we end the podcast. I know everyone's given a generous amount of time, but this is the one where I wanted to challenge you the most because we've had a few tight ones, a bit few easy ones as well, respectively. Kirali. Definitely being sold, man. Can't be having him. Um, but yeah, we're going for striker edition. We're going for Zlatan Ibrahimovic, going for Robert Lewandowski, 
And we're going to go for Harry Kane. The start bench cell, so Kane, Lewandowski, Zlatan, Ibrahimovic. Crazy. That's easy, man. Go what? for it. Go for it. That's easy. Go for it. Where are we going with this one? So he said Ibrahimovic, Lewandowski, and Kane. Um, Harry and Kane. Kane. I was going to go Benzema, but it's not that much at the Euro. So. Um, I'm going... It's easy. Start, yeah. I'm, going, I'm going to start Ibrahimovic. Yeah, bench Lewandowski, sell Harry Kane. That's what I'm doing. Ooh. That's what I'm doing. And I'm selling Harry Kane based on the fact that Harry Kane, yeah, Didn't is a bottle job. He's a bottle job. He's a bottle job. He's a bottle job. Didn't even want to stay and break the break the record. Yeah. Didn't even want to do that. Yeah. I just think, yeah. These lot, these lot show a bit more. And not only that, yeah, he signed this. I just feel that his, his temperament is not, it's not, if I'm looking at a striker, his mindset is not the striker that I need. Don't get me wrong, he'll score, once the going's great, he'll score goals for you and whatnot. I just feel that there's certain little moments that Harry Kane should have took where he didn't. Like, for instance, Join the final United. against, the final against <laughs> Italy, he should have put the nation on his back and, and made his name um, and cemented his name in history in that game and absolutely tormented them old the old fogies of Benucci and 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 Chiellini. Yeah, he should he, he should he should have done that. Um I just think as again he shouldn't he he should have had some he should have a bit more bottle and, and kick the kick you know, threw his toys out the pram a bit more and left Spurs many years ago. Yeah, as opposed to letting it be all nicey nicey and letting him and leaving when they when they see fit. So for me, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a great goal scorer, he's a great addition to having your team, but when I look at the other two, the other two mean serious business, elite mentality, elite goal scoring, yeah, and not only that, uh, Lewandowski puts the nation on his back, you know what I mean? Because I think, off the top of my head, I can name about five Polish players in, 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 of all time. So, yeah, that's my, that's why I'm so start, start, um, Ibrahimovic, bench Lewandowski, and get rid of um Harry Kane. Nicely done, nicely done. Danny, where are we going with this one? I'm going a little bit different. Um, I'm starting Harry Kane. Ooh, from a West Ham fan, that's massive. Why? I'm starting Harry Kane. I think Harry Kane had the choice of what he wanted. And uh, I think he could have stayed at Spurs and, and broke the records. Didn't he play um, for Millwall on loan once upon a time? Yeah. He did, yeah, he did. This Leicester City Millwall. as well, wasn't it? Was it Leicester City as well? Leicester, Lone Norwich, well. Millwall, Leighton Orient. How do I know that? But yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Four teams. The, the only real reason that England have probably got into the later stages of tournaments in, in recent years, um, the only real reason why Spurs have probably been fairly half successful in recent years. And I relevant, mean, I should say. I'm yeah, not having that, to be fair. Yeah. If you, if you look at Spurs at the moment, they if they had Harry Kane in that team, I think they they go above and beyond. Um, now in Germany, still doing what he does. Um, I think the and then going on to my next point, I'm going to sell Lewandowski. Um, I think anyone in anyone could have done a shift in that Bayern team. Harry Kane's uh, proven you, it now as well. You had Chupo Moting scoring goals when you've got Leroy Sane. <laughs> Kingsley Coman, like you just know, gonna have really yeah. Do you know what I mean? Doing doing bits left behind, like behind them. Thomas Muller, Musiala, like yeah, all of these players. I think you just need to stand still and just let the ball come and hit you in your head. Um, hey, what, what about Dortmund days though? Give him some credit, man. The, uh, yeah, that, that's the only real credibility. But when when people know of, of Lewandowski, I think it's because of his buy, like you know, scoring five goals in, in you know that minimal amount of time against Wolfsburg. League. Like mm-hmm. for Dortmund, that like the only re- like yeah, he's a, he's a part of a bigger picture at Dortmund. Um, I mean, I suppose if you, you, did you say sell Lewandowski? Yes. I mean, I, I suppose it's if he's it, that he's been a good businessman because Lewandowski actually cost nothing in his career, so he's gonna make money off of him. So it's good business. It's good for business. Yeah, yeah, I say that, I say that. Finally, selling him for some profit, which is good. And you're benching Ibrahimovic. Why are you benching Ibrahimovic over Harry I Kane? Think Ibrahimovic is someone you can bring off the bench, and because of that presence, like he thinks he's him. Do you know what I mean? You can be like, all right, Eva, we need a goal. And he's like, yeah, don't worry, mate, I've got it. And he knows his head. He, and then look, if I'm if I'm the manager, he can run over to me at the end and put his arms up and and celebrate in front of me like, yeah, you should have started me um, all he wants. But if he's getting me that goal, I'm I'm walking away with my paycheck that week and I'm I'm, I'm hopefully three points. So and even when he went to America, you saw that mm. he, he was just that sort of vital person. Like came on on his debut, scored two goals, I believe. Um, 
made the Americans love him, played at every big club um, in and around the European leagues when he wanted to. Do you know what I mean? Even when he was at United, people underrated him or people overrated him then because of what he did, but still got some pretty vital goals um, for United. Top scorer that season as well. Incredible. <laughs> He's one of the best. I think he's one of the best strikers we've had. Yeah, Post free flag, transfer as well. Yeah, yeah. free is, transfer. Is in, yeah, he's in my top five signings since Sir Alex Ferguson left as well. So I, I think I think Danny have a problem with him when he starts saying, "Yeah, you're on the bench." He'd be like, "Latan doesn't do bench," and then it's going to be all problems. It's going to be problems after that. You might you might you might end up in a bin like Gattuso. <laughs> <laughs> Get the I'll take my chances, well. man. I'll take my chances. I'll have my bodyguards with me at the time. Sorry, no, I'll, yeah. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Matt, how about you? Are you going to have a bodyguard for uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic or what's happening with your start bench though, for this one? I'm going to start with Marcel. I'm Marcel Lewandowski. Um, I think he did bits at Bayern, but I feel like what Harry Kane's done, he's just literally gone there and shown. He's just ripped it up already. And 18 goals in 10 games? Crazy. Phenomenal. phenomenal. In 10 and Bundesliga it's hard, games. It's well. hard as an Arsenal player to praise and ex-Spurs but last time I remember I think the last time he remember seeing a trophy was when he was on a parade bus but that's a story <laughs> for another day um, Audi Cup Audi Cup don't forget the Audi Cup man <laughs> but, um, he no, walked no, past no. the Euros as well he walked past the Champions walked League as past, well yeah, so walked he's walked past, past them a few times appreciate so, that nah but he um, yeah I think uh, Lewandowski and I'm looking at him at Barca now and it's I think it's kind Barca? of sad to see Barca it's going on now with him like they're Bayern. looking to get but so, no, but Bayern is at Bayern. No, Lewandowski, Lewandowski. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but he's awful yeah, now. Yeah, and I've seen that, and he's linked with going Saudi Arabia. So for me, it's kind of looking a bit not that good for him at the moment. Um, I'm going to bench Ibra. Um, with Ibra, he's got an aura. Like, obviously, mm. he's got, like that. Danny said, he's been to all these clubs, PSG, uh, Juve, Barca, Man United. Like, he's done it all, been everywhere. He's got a great aura about him and whatever team he's at, you can imagine how all the other players kind of feed off him and perform a lot better. Uh, Harry Kane, number one. I'm sure Travis will love this part. Um, Glad he's not here. He'd have just been <laughs> taking it over the podcast. Oh my day, Harry Kane, an Arsenal fan. Loving now, him. Now, you know what? Harry Kane, for me, I remember every time he used to play Spurs, he just put so much fear into me. And he's one of the few strikers when, when he's in front of goal, 99 times out of 100 is going in. Left foot, right foot, head up, whatever it is. is you know, he's very, very clinical. And he's one of the players where I said, like, if United had got him, boy, <laughs> you <laughs> would have been doing a lot, lot better. But yeah, Harry Kane, number one for me. So I'd start Harry Kane, bench Ibra, and sell Lewandowski. Nicely done. And to conclude this uh, last, well, last round, I should say, um, I'm going for selling Robert Lewandowski. I'm going to bench Harry Kane and I'm going to sell Zlatan Ibrahimovic. My thought process is the fact that, again, Harry Kane's going great in different countries. Lewandowski won the league last season for Barcelona, respectively. But Zlatan Ibrahimovic, for me, what is done for Sweden in terms of propelling them into being, again, I'm not Swedish, but I like the kit. Um, what is done in terms of making them a relevant nation in European football, the first time is not in the squad. Now, they were out of the Euros. They, they didn't even qualify in one of the biggest group stages of all time. And it shows the importance and the relevance he has on the Swedish nation as well. Lewandowski, obviously, he did it for Poland, which is great. But I think in terms of Zlatan doing it in Italy, going again back to AC Milan at 40 years of age after two ACL injuries in his career, that shows the power of the man. That shows the resilience of him as well. Then winning the Scudetto um, at 41 years of age as well. That was incredible. Only retiring last season. He's playing in the 1990s. Uh, 1999, I think, he was playing for Malmo and Ajax as well. So we won at Ajax. We won at AC Milan, Inter Milan, Juventus. I'm going to say Man United, Europa League, first European uh, trophy for Zlatan. I would say another, Weng another Wenger howler as well. It's true. The, one of the biggest Wenger howlers besides Ronaldo, Messi, Ayo Torre, all these players, he, he seems to fumble. But Zlatan Mihovic should not have done a trial and he should have gone in as a really good player for him as well, which would have been great. But yeah, Zlatan Mihovic. We had Bent now. We didn't worry about no. You you had um Jeremy Alley at the air as well. He Lord, was, he, Lord, he Lord, Lord Lord Bentler. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready for it, which is good. Uh, but yeah, just to conclude, I'm starting Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I am benching Harry Kane, and I am going to sell Robert Lewandowski because, as Danny said earlier, Harry Kane is doing what Robert Lewandowski did for like eight years at Bayern Munich, and he's going to improve them even more and more. My question is, I'm not sure if Robert Lewandowski will last until 41 years of age as well. Mm -hmm. Even with the whole sports science thing that's going on now in football, I'm not sure he can last until that long respectively in his playing career. But that's for another I mean, topic for another day. Yeah. Harry Kane could, I think. I could do 36, 37, I think, even as a withdrawn forward. 
which will be good. But yeah, that draft was very uncomfortable, very challenging, but one of the best podcasts um, we've done this year because at the time of recording, um, we're coming to the end of the year. And also the fact that this may be recorded and then posted on the first week of January. So technically, I would be right with this one as well. Um, but no, everyone, thank you very much for listening. We've had a great time recording this, a great time debating this as well. Um, let's have our closing statement. So Traps, where can everyone find you if they want to hear more from you? And will you be back again for another podcast draft later in the year? I mean, I've had fun on this one and it wasn't really, I, 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 I've, was, and it wasn't really. It's I not your know normal cup of tea, right? So, but it's one of you know things. what? I, I feel like now that I've had, I've got the first one the way. I feel like the next one, I'm going to be even better. I feel like I won this one here. I'm not going to lie, but I'll definitely be back. And yeah, if you, he if just you said type, he won it, so I'm like, I'm not sure the public decides if, this one. Yeah, the general I mean, election. We'll <laughs> and tap, who can make the most fake Instagram accounts as well? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think, yeah, I mean, if you type my name into, um, if you type at traps, well, my app's traps.mufc, if you type that in any social media, I should appear. If I don't appear, message me on the one that I do appear and I'll appear on that one that you want me to appear on. That's fine. Nicely done. Now, keep up the good work and I'm enjoying your, in a way, somewhat controversial, but open opinion about Manchester United this season. Look mm. to hear more from you soon, which would be great fun. Matthew, where can everyone find you and when are you going to be back on for another draft? Because again, my friend, you said, are you sure about the one nation per play? And I'm like, yeah, because I think you've got it. And you proved today that you've got it, my friend. So we're only getting harder and more difficult with mm-hmm. this one in terms of drafts. So where can everyone find you and how did you find uh, this draft today? You can find me on Twitter. So I've got the um, BOTN podcast on here. The um, reason why i got BOTN, someone on YouTube has Bournemouth guys with back of the net. So I had to <laughs> do the BOTN. Um, but yeah, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. And I just want to say, in regards to the draft, great draft. I thought I clearly won. Then I heard back the teams again. Daddy had a great defence. Traps came back. I'd, I'd give him that. Arthur Christian said, I thought he was done, but he come back and hands your team was good. But anyway, public vote oh, for me. Oh, mine was good. Is it Dan uh, Cruz Iniesta? Oh. Public oh, vote for me because my midfield won it for me. Thank you. Drops Mike. Thank you. My midfield was clear of yours. That's all I'm saying, man. Now, nah, this is this is going to be a never ended. And even when this podcast comes out, it's going to be funny to listen back to it, which will be good. And someone who brought a lot of comedy and comedic vibes is Danny. Danny, good to have you back on, my friend. Been missing you on every. It's been a while since we've been on the podcast, my friend, but good to have you back on. Um, are you going to leave a, a, a leaving note for us in terms of how you won the draft or were you, were you, yeah, on this one? What do you think? Is the title staying I'll at let, home for you? Is all I'm saying. I'll let my uh, my servants speak. <laughs> I'll let my my words do do the talking, and I'll say, look, I definitely uh, won this draft. Um, look, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. But I think for the time being, uh, the oh, belt is staying at home, staying right with me. Maybe it was one of those like WWE matches where it's like by disqualification. Do you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> it, it was one of the. It was one of those money in the banks when the the, the first match is finished and then he just cashes it in. Coming yeah. in, that's as well. I cashed in late on. You know what I mean? I got defeated by my midfield, and then that Ronaldo Van Basten partnership up top. That's my money in the bank, and I'm like Edge out of nowhere. Spears, uh, Spears, Matt. Little right. bit of attitude adjustment, the traps. Then I hit hands with the RKO, and then that's me done. I'm I'm walking away out of this venue with the uh with the championship draft once again might i just add but yeah look great draft uh love being on the podcast uh make sure you're listening subscribing to whatever platform you're listening on um checking out the other guys too um new things coming for me in, in 2024 so social media so uh depending on when this comes out check out the description to see if you want to check out where i am so nice done looking forward to it the I can't even wait anymore until we hear this secret announcement, which will be good fun indeed. Um, but yeah, everyone, thank you very much for listening. I clearly won the draft because I'm the one that's going to make seven different fake Instagram accounts and <laughs> click Hamza, Hamza, Hamza on all of these for the best draft as well, which is great. But I mean, Zidane Cruz and Iniesta is one of the greatest midfields I've ever seen. And David Beckham as well, personal favourite um, as well, respectively. But no, we're all looking forward to the Euros next summer. It's going to be a great tournament um, as well, respectively. And... I'm hoping that we're going to have a lot more drafts coming up over 2024. It's great to talk about football on a weekly basis, but sometimes I want to kick back, talk about football, old school football with your friends. There's nothing better, in my opinion. It's been a great time and a great conversation with everyone. Everyone, thank you very much for joining the podcast. Great appreciation. Everyone, thank you very much for listening. Take care and goodbye. <laughs>